Is your data reaching its full potential or is it trapped in a survey silo hidden from the people in your business that need it most? With Connect, I'll show you how you can set your data free by setting up workflows with business apps you use every day without the hassle of a complicated setup. Connect is a natural part of the survey design and form creation process. Using Connect, you can automate tasks such as sending notifications to your teammates in Slack or adding responses to a spreadsheet in real time. So you don't have to leave SurveyMonkey to set up automated workflows. Right now, Connect apps include Slack, Microsoft Teams, and Microsoft Excel. With Slack and Microsoft Teams, you can send notifications to your team or colleagues as responses start to flow in. That means you can quickly address any issues or opportunities as they arise. The Excel app allows for your survey responses to be added to your spreadsheet every time a new response comes in. The best time to add an app in Connect is after you've designed your survey or form, but before you start collecting your responses. That way you can test your automated workflows and make sure they're working the way you want them to. To get started, click on Connect Apps. Here you will see a new page which shows all our currently available Connect apps, as well as more than 200 popular integrations we already support. With a Connect app, you can set the app up in just a few steps in SurveyMonkey. While with an integration, you can configure its settings in the partner app site or product. Connect apps can be managed centrally in your survey of Twitter. Hover to post to channel. This opens up a sidebar where you can authorize SurveyMonkey to connect to Slack. Click connect to get started. You'll be asked to approve some permissions. I'm gonna click allow and you're ready to go. I want to create a quick action that allows me to pass on some feedback about our customers. Select post to channel and that opens up the sidebar. We'll start by selecting the channel. I'll also want to write an optional message. And as I'll show you later, it's much better to have a bit of context as to what this notification is about and why it's relevant to them. So you can see this example here. Check out the CSAT response and follow up. Uh, if the score is below seven. So let's follow this as a good example. You can choose to include the response data in your Slack notification and choose which questions you'd like the notification to include answers from. You can add up to five selections here to help give the team a bit more of a fuller picture. You can also include a link to the responses, which will allow any person receiving that notification to view the individual response in SurveyMonkey, even if they don't have a SurveyMonkey account. Now, I want to make sure that only the negative responses are being sent to the Slack group so they can take action. So for that, I'm going to add a filter. Click on target specific responses, then click on add filter. Filters define which responses should trigger a notification. There are a number of reasons why you would want to set up a filter. For example, there might be some time sensitive information shared in your customer feedback survey. For example, low customer levels of satisfaction might want to be flagged to the customer support team as soon as possible so that they can immediately resolve it or reach out to the customer. Another reason might be that you want to filter certain positive responses or suggestions about a product to the product team so that they can review this feedback and maybe make changes to their product. The product team would be really interested in that feedback, so you could set a filter that only passes along that feedback to that team. Another reason might be that you want only senior leadership to receive certain response data. Let's have a look and see which questions would be the most appropriate for the customer support team to respond to. I'm going to go with question seven, as I think this will be the most relevant for this notification. There will be the default options or values here, and they will be positive. You can filter it by a number of different methods here. In this instance, I'm going to remove the positives and make sure that it is one of not so responsive or not at all responsive. I'm going to add that. 
I'm going to apply. So this is our poster channel, all good to go. Give it one last look and then I will hit activate. Great, so now this has been set up, it brings you to the manage page. This page allows you to manage any of the quick actions and apps that you have set up and connected. You can see another quick action I've set up here to the customer marketing team. The last activity was one day ago. You can edit the action at any time. Brings you back to this particular page where you can edit if maybe it's not working the way that you want. If at any time you want to disable your quick action, simply toggle this button here. You can manage any of the connections that you've set up, including deleting any connected app. What's important to note about quick actions and filters is that they operate on an and function, not an or function. So for this quick action here, we've added one filter and that filter needs to be fulfilled for this notification to fire. If I was to add in a new filter for this quick action, that would mean that both of those filters would have to be fulfilled in order for the quick action to work. So we can do that here. You can create as many quick actions as you need and you can send them to different teams. This is why testing your quick actions is really important because then you can make sure that the notifications are firing the way you want them to. Now that we've set this up, let's test it and see what the notifications look like in Slack. So here we are at the customer support team Slack channel and you can see here is an example of what a notification would look like. It will state the survey. It will also include the contextual message. We have the survey response data for these three questions. So you can see that question seven, how responsive have we been to your questions? Not so responsive. So this is why they're receiving the notification because they negatively responded to our filter question seven. And we can also see that they were not satisfied with the boutique and the purchase didn't meet their expectations. So this does give us a bit of information around why they're dissatisfied. If we want to dive in a bit deeper, they can click on this link and they'll be brought to the survey responses. And they'll be able to see a number of key information points here. So how long the person spent taking the survey, when they responded to the survey, and the exact responses that they gave which gives a bit more context to the customer support team about how this person was feeling. You can see overall that this person was dissatisfied with their experience and so they'll be able to follow up and get in touch with this customer to try and improve their experience. And they are able to see this individual response data without having a SurveyMonkey account and they can easily sign up by clicking here. And that's a wrap. With Connect, you've got all your automations in one place. So you and your team can truly get the most out of your survey data. Comment below and let us know how you plan on using this feature or if you have any questions. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. This lets us know what kind of content you're looking for and what we should cover next.